Hi. Yes, miss? My name is Rose Angela Blackwell. I was told you'd be expecting me. Is this about George? That's right. I still can't believe it. But here's the key. 12th floor, penthouse A. Thanks. Whoever this Michael is, he seems to know quite a lot. So this Michael has a source who knows about bestowers, about me. This is starting to get personal. This is private property, you know. Hmm? Oh, um, hi there. Yes, um, hi there. What are you doing up here? I'm a friend of George Austin. Hmm, a friend, of course. I suppose he was bound to get to a redhead sooner or later. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Please, it's none of my business. Anyway, I'd best head back in. But I'm sure I'll see you around. Ta. Joey, could you come out here? What? Hi there. I'm sorry, have we met? Kind of. I think you met my friend earlier. I see. You're both looking after George's place. Yeah, something like that. So you actually live here? Uh, so to speak. Yes. Why are you so surprised? Well, this place is kind of... well, empty. I live alone. That's not what I mean. Look around. There's nothing in here. What on earth are you talking about? <sighs> Never mind. Who are you, if you don't mind me asking? Cute. Very cute. Huh? Wait, you're serious? Well, isn't this delicious? It's so rare that I get to be the mysterious one. My name's Joey. Joey Malone. Why don't you tell me yours? You honestly don't know who I am. I'm afraid not. I admit, I'm fascinated. I know your name, but you don't know mine. It's not often that I'm in this position. So, are you going to tell me or what? I think not. I want to savor this for just a little while longer. So what is this? You famous or something? Or something. Come on, you know my name. It's only fair. I can't tell if you're being genuine or if you're just playing with me. Why not both? Well, the night is young. See if you can figure it out.
Well, whoever you are, I'll see you around. Say hi to George for me, if you see him. It says, I know about Heather, and it's signed by someone named Jay. Hi there. Hello again, mister. What brings you by? I know about Heather. Do you know anything about this? About what? This note. The one on your floor. I have no idea. It has nothing to do with me. And what's it doing here? I have no idea. Okay, okay, relax. The note is signed J. Who's J? I have no idea. And I don't know anything about any note. Well, whoever you are, I'll see you around. Say hi to George for me, if you see him. you. Sam told me you'd be swinging by. Hi. Corey, was it? No. It's Officer Palmer. So Durkin told me to speak to you? Yes, I heard. Congratulations, I guess. I don't know why you're so special, but orders are orders. You need any information from us, I'll see about getting it to you. But you talk to me, and only me. Understand? Perfectly. Does this phone number mean anything to you? Not really, but I can trace it for you. Trace it? Run the number, see who it belongs to. Within reason, anyway. Where'd you find it? I found it on George Austin's phone. Oh, we ran that number already. You did? Yeah. It belonged to Grace Church. Probably calling for donations or something. Yeah, or something. Hmm. Thanks anyway. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. Remember me? Yes, and would you please keep your voice down? Sorry. I checked with the police. This number belongs to a phone in this church. A man I'm looking for made a phone call from this number. His name is Michael. It's very important that I find him. I'm afraid I don't know who you're talking about. I am sorry. Do you know any Michaels? In my line of work, I know more than I can count. Are you sure you don't know anybody named Michael who made a call from this church? Quite positive. The telephone that uses this number, where is it? Why would you need to know that? Michael used the phone. Maybe he left a clue behind when he did. And he could have used any one of a dozen offices in our administration wing. Really? Over a dozen? Yes. So, if you want to locate Michael Cooper, you'll have to find another way. Wait, Cooper? Pardon? You said Michael Cooper. Isn't that the gentleman you're looking for? No, I just said his name was Michael. So you did. A slip of the tongue. My apologies. It is quite late and I'm tired. You need to tell me who Michael Cooper is. I told you I don't know any Michael Cooper. Well, thanks. I'll be going. Stay safe. Huh. 
So Michael Cooper was a priest. Interesting. Excuse me. Yes. Michael Cooper. He's a priest too, isn't he? So? So, it's a pretty big coincidence, wouldn't you say? I... Um... Listen, you have no idea how important this is. Michael is in danger, real serious danger. From who? I don't know, but you can't protect him. And you can? I don't know that either, but I'm gonna try. I made a promise. He came to me scared, begging me to protect him, to give him sanctuary. He was ranting. I should have turned him away, but we roomed together at the seminary. We were close friends once. What could I do? You can take me to him. He's raving. He's mad. He, he says he's in a battle for his very soul. Is this true? Yes. Yes, it is. <sighs> he's in the school. It's closed for the winter break, so it seemed like a good a place as any to hide him. Here's a key. The entrance is around the corner. Please, do whatever you must. Just don't come back here. Don't worry. So, thrown out of a church. I suppose with our record it was only a matter of time. <sighs> the entrance to the school is around the block. Let's go. Michael? Michael Cooper. You! Stay back, Bestower. I've got a gun. Just a second. I said stay back! I need to talk to you. Talk? Did talking help Leah or George or any of the others? Please, I'm here to help. Help? Oh, I wish that was true. How much help did you give George or Leah or the others? I couldn't save them, but I want to try and save you, if I can. Try and save me? You were supposed to be the expert. That was the whole plan. Plan? Yes. Our brilliant plan. We get the bestower to escort our souls to the next world. Protect us from this force that is after us. Instead, you let us be destroyed. I'm going to stop it. You can trust me on this. Trust. We trusted you to save us. And look where we are. I'm sorry. Whatever is going on, it's new. I've never seen anything like it before. I see. And what about him? Huh? Your friend. The man behind you. He hasn't said a word since you walked in here. Uh, me? D do you mean me? Yes, you. Don't look so surprised. How else could I have known who you were? Now get out of here. You've been nothing but trouble ever since George went to look for you. Don't shoot. I'm leaving. Please, give them some time, my host. That voice, it can't be. I told you to stay in the other room. Yes, my host, I know. But I had to intervene. These two know me, if I may. Fine, fine. Just make it quick. I'm losing concentration. Malone, Blackwell, what a pleasant surprise to see you both again. Yeah, surprise is the word. What the hell are you doing here? Is it not obvious? You freed me, Malone. Brought me back into this world. And as befits all of our kind, I had a host waiting for me. And so I have returned to my former duties. Look, as much as I am touched by this reunion, I need to focus. Perhaps we should all converse outside. Fine, outside. Just leave me in peace. Thank you, my host. You're a bestower too? What gave it away? The spirit guide who won't leave me alone? Look, maintaining this circle leaves me a bit... cranky, sorry. If you can help, great. If not, 
Well, I've made my peace with it. Just go talk to her. She's outside. I need to concentrate. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Blackwell? Malone? It's been a... long time since we've been able to converse. It's been almost six months since Joey freed you. How come we're only seeing you now? I admit the transition hasn't been... pleasant. I have had three hosts since returning to this world. The first was an old man on the edge of death. He lingered for six weeks before finally succumbing to the inevitable. When the old man passed, I became bound to his niece for a time. She ran every time she saw me. I tried to keep my distance, give her time to adjust. But in the end, she fell down the stairs in an attempt to flee. The poor woman died, and I was passed to her brother, and the man inside. Do you know what's going on? Why are these souls being attacked? I do not know. I wish I did. Like you, we saw it happen. We saw a soul being torn apart and could do nothing. I'm afraid my host became a little unreasonable after that. Why was George looking for me? We needed a bestower. A proper bestower. My host and I were not up to the task. Eh? It might be due to my time in the void. It might be because my host's soul has been marked by whatever is out there. But in any case, our abilities are limited. We cannot even help lost souls move on as you do. We can see them and talk to them, but that is all. Hence why we needed you. Lucky us. So what can we do? We don't even know what's going on. <sighs> Our theory was that you could help move these poor souls into the next world before they were destroyed. But it appears that it did not achieve the desired result. You could say that, yeah. You must investigate. My host and I are restricted, but you two are not. If anyone can help uncover why these poor spirits are being attacked, and stop it, it is you. You should really call me Rosangela. Forgive me. When you are as old as I am, all the names blur together. So I tend to address those I speak to by their family name. It is just... easier that way. And less painful. I'm afraid it is a habit that is difficult to break. So how'd you like being on the outside, as it were? I imagine it's better than being trapped wherever you were. I had thought, I had hoped, that I would pass on. That being brought back to the mortal world would force me to obey mortal laws. Instead, I... No, it is not to be. I have returned to my former duties, therefore I must have further work to do. But yes, it is nicer than being trapped in the void. Did I ever thank you, Malone? Not as such, no. Well, I must rectify that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Any time. Well, I suppose we'll talk to you soon. Of course. Father the Michael? Lord is my shepherd. Yeah? Could you tell me about the Grace Group? It was some kind of self-help group? <sighs> about 20 years ago, I was a very different person. I suppose you could call me an alcoholic, although I wouldn't have said it at the time. Then I saw an ad in the newspaper. It promised to help folks like me find their way. It seemed to be some kind of hippie self-help group, but I went to a meeting anyway. I don't remember much about the meetings, but somehow... I had discovered that going to seminary school was something I had to do. It all made sense. Made sense? I just knew it was what I was meant to be doing. And I was right. What is this circle? Oh, this. Madeline taught me how to do it. It prevents anything spiritual from getting to me. It takes some concentration to maintain, so I'm sorry if I seem a bit... inhospitable. What happened at these meetings? That's just it. I don't remember. Until recently, I never questioned it before. How messed up is that? I'd go, I'd sit down, and leave. I'd meet with the other members for coffee afterward. What on earth did we talk about? We must have found something. But I do remember a man. Benjiro. He ran the meetings. Benjiro? Yeah, Japanese guy. I don't remember anything else about him. How many people went to these meetings? There were six of us. You already know about Leah and George and myself. The others are dead. 
Who were they? Does it matter? They are dead. Their souls were taken. Even still, tell me. <sighs> Jeffrey Dutta, Heather Goffstein, Peter Fielding. How did you learn what was happening? You mean that our souls were being taken? Yeah. I... it was a few weeks ago. I was at the bedside of a friend. Jeffrey, his name was. He went to the Grace Group meetings back in the day. Like me. He had been in a car accident. Hit and run. He was dying, and he wanted me there. And when he died, I saw it. His spirit being torn apart. He screamed. I'll never forget that scream. I know. I saw it too. Anyway, with Madeline's help, I began looking into other members of the group and learned it was happening to all of us. You know the rest. Could you tell me about Peter? Peter Fielding, yes. I never had much contact with him. He died several months ago. I'm afraid it's too late for him. You saw his soul being taken? Well, no. He died before Madeline came into my life, so I can't say for sure. But he went to Grace Group meetings, and he's dead. What other conclusion can I reach? So you don't know for sure if Peter Fielding's soul was taken? Not as such, no. But what else can I assume? So you don't know for sure if Peter Fielding's soul was taken? Not as such, no. But what else can I assume? How exactly did Peter Fielding die? Why? Are you going to try and find his spirit? There is no spirit! It's gone! You said it yourself. You don't know for sure. <sighs> it was some kind of accident. I'm not sure of the details. I read about his death in the obituaries. Too late for his funeral, sadly, but I said a prayer for him. Can you tell me again how Peter Fielding died? I told you before. There's no point. Just humor me. <sighs> it was some kind of accident. I'm not sure of the details. I read about his death in the obituaries. Too late for his funeral, sadly, but I said a prayer for him. All right, Michael. We're going to go. Of course. Godspeed to the both of you. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though so I Peter Fielding owned a gem in Murray death, Hill. Worth a visit, I, will I fear suppose. No evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table. 